Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video I'm going to show you a template for creating laser cut boxes with internal dividers like this one. I think these are awesome for organizing things, and the template has a lot of options, so you can really customize it to your needs, but I also find it really easy to use. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples so we can explore all the different things you can do, and then I'm going to show you the assembly, and I'm going to share some tips for getting a really nice tight fit on those joints. So let's get started. You will find a link to this project down in the video description. So here on the project page, I'm going to scroll down to check out all the different options we can change. Let's start with a general overview of the way the project is constructed with the basic options, but then I will go into more detail with the examples. Here on the left, we have a really nice three-dimensional view of the assembled project with the dimensions, and here on the right is where we can change them. And we also have use of the project laying flat, the way it's going to be cut on the machine. There is this assembly view that can be a guide to put it together, and this is uh, the cut layout, the way it's exported uh, when we download the SVG. Let's start with the overall outside dimensions of the box, the width, depth, and height. If I want to change any of these dimensions, I can click on the value and then scrub to the right to increase it, and scrub to the left to decrease it. And then the view will update, including the dimensions. And additionally, I can always type uh, any number that I want and then press enter. So let's type something like three inches and press enter. Let's type something like four inches for the depth and then let's make it one and a half for the height. So for the width and depth, these would be the dimensions of the final box as measured from the outside faces. So from this plane to this plane, um, as you can see here. And for the height, it would be the distance between the very bottom of the box and the very top. For the material thickness, you want to measure the thickness of your material with calipers and then enter a reasonable average here. This is going to affect two things with this project. The first thing is the look of the joints. The joints are called finger joints because the way the faces come together resemble a little bit like interlocking your fingers, like these. Uh, we can see it here in this view. So if I make the material thickness uh, bigger, then those uh, fingers are going to get longer. So if they're longer than the actual material thickness, they're going to protrude a little bit. So we just want to get them just right by measuring it. The second thing that the material thickness can potentially affect in this project is the size of the inner compartments. So if we look at the preview here, you'll see that I get the outside dimensions of the box and then the inside dimensions of the compartments. And if I change the material thickness in this example, you'll see if I increase it, then the compartments get a little bit smaller. So if you're aiming for a very specific size of the inside compartments too, make sure you select the material thickness first. And yes, of course, we can change the divisions inside of the box, probably the most important thing to mention by changing the number of columns and the number of rows down here. The thing to know in this case is that the columns and rows are evenly divided after accounting for material thickness. So you'll see if I add any more columns, they're all the same size. And there is a way to specify different sizes that I'll cover later in the video. Two more things. If you want to make a box like this one, it is possible to specify a single column or a single row. That way we have divisions in just one direction. One last thing I'll mention here is that sometimes you want to make just the dividers so you can insert them into an existing box. And in that case, you don't need to include the bottom. So we can uncheck this uh, option here and the finger joints go away and the cut layout doesn't have the bottom. Now let's make a concrete example so I can show you a practical approach to these. I want to build a holder for these AAA batteries. So in this case, I really care about the inside dimensions of the compartments. So as I mentioned before, the material thickness is going to have an effect on that. So I'm going to start by specifying that dimension. I measure the maple plywood I want to use uh, to be 0.115 inches. So let's start with that. The next thing I know is that I want the height of my box to be about one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to enter that too. And to get a nice fit for the battery, I determined that the inside compartment needs to be 0.41 inches. So to keep things really simple, I'm just going to scrub the outside dimensions until the inside dimension matches what I want. So I'm going to decrease this one a bunch until I hit the 0.41 that I want. So that looks good. And then I'm going to decrease the width until I hit the 0.41 that I want. The same. And we'll go with that. This is going to store 12 batteries. And at this point, we could hit the download button 
and then download an SVG that we can cut right away. But I did promise I was gonna give you more details about this curve compensation number. Some of us find this a little bit confusing, so we decided to make a little tester. There's gonna be a link on the project page and also in the video description. And so the idea here is that you cut two separate pieces, two smaller pieces, so they waste less material, but also by feeling it with your hands, it's a more intuitive way of finding the right number. So on this project page, I'm gonna scroll down to see the download options. And the most important thing here is to use the same material thickness that you measured before. So I'm gonna enter uh, the one that I used and I'm gonna download an SVG that I can feel with my hands. So I'm gonna show you. I cut the two pieces and when testing, it's important to match the numbers. So let's start with this 005. It matches very precisely, but it doesn't really stay together. So let's try the next one. This is 06, making sure I'm matching those two and I get a nicer fit and it actually stays together, but light tapping will move it and I can tell it won't hold for long. So let's try the next one. 007 feels a bit more firm when I put it together and I think this might be good for me if I wanna use some glue to hold the joints. 008 is the last one, let's see how that fits. It clicks nicely together and the joint feels fairly stiff. And if I tap it, stays there. So I think this is the number that works for me. So from that test, I determined I want a slightly tighter fit so I can assemble this first project without glue. So I'm gonna hit the 08 here and I'm gonna download the SVG by hitting the blue button. And then I'm gonna show you the assembly. These are all the pieces. Here are the outside faces of the box and here are the column dividers and here are the row dividers. And I'm gonna start by putting those dividers together. Those are the inside sections of the box. Next, I'll attach the outside faces of the box. Initially, I just wanna make sure the tabs go into the slots, but I'm not gonna push them all the way in. That's one face, then I'm gonna do the opposite face. And to finish it, I'm gonna tap it lightly with a mallet. Next, the other two sides, and initially, I just wanna wiggle it in to make sure it's going straight, but then I'm still gonna finish it with the mallet. This is the opposite side. We'll nudge it with the mallet a little bit. And finally, the bottom of the box. Now let's talk about creating custom spacing for the divisions inside of the box. So as you can see, I have a box on the screen that is five by four by one, and it has three columns and three rows and then the three columns are evenly spaced as the default is. So in order to change those sizes to what we want, let's open the folder here called custom sizing. The mechanics for this feature are explained right in this comment, but I'll go over them. I think they're kind of interesting and they're trying to be really flexible. So the idea is that you enter the inner dimensions for the column or rows at right here in inches in this case. We can also select the units. Um, so let me show you how they work. Even though we specified three columns here, I don't have to enter the dimensions for all of the three columns. I could enter just a single one if I want to. So let's say I enter the number two. So you'll see that now that corresponds to the dimension of the first column and the remaining two are taken up by the remaining distance that is left over. Um, I can add another dimension, let's say 1.75. And now uh, the first two I did are determined by my numbers and then the last one is just the remaining distance. So I don't necessarily have to enter that remaining distance in this case. We can also determine which column is the one that gets the remaining space or the one that gets uh, spaced evenly. If I want the remaining space to be in the middle, um, I can simply enter a minus one right there. So I will enter minus one. And then uh, you'll see that now I get the two over here, the evenly spaced one or remaining here, and then the 1.75 on the right. So this is how you would do it if you wanna maintain the outside dimensions of the box, but you still need to tweak or alter the inside dimensions of the divisions. I think this is how I would approach it if I were to make an organizer, say for a board game box, where I wanna fit my new box into an existing box, but I still wanna create the spacing for the cards or tokens that fit that particular game. But if the outside dimensions are not as important to me because I'm making something that is kind of free floating, then I can actually enter any number that I want inside the brackets. Uh, and it doesn't have to add up to the total width. So for example, if I enter something like one, three, and four, now I get a little warning down here that says that the specified width here is being ignored 
because now we have custom width sizes that add up to 8.5. So now let's move on to making an actual example with these ideas. So I gathered some essential pencils and some pens and a fancy pencil sharpener and an eraser. And I want to have those in different compartments. So let's see how I would do that. So I know that I want two columns and two rows. And then uh, looking at it, I decided that I want the two columns to be one, uh, two inches, and the other one to be one and a half inches. So of course, in that case, uh, the specified width is also being ignored. And now let's see about the row sizes. So I determined that the, bit, the longest pencil was going to be about seven inches. And then the biggest uh, size that I can accommodate that uh, pencil sharpener is about 2.7. And so all, I also get a little warning here saying that the depth is being ignored. In this case, I can actually change the material thickness after the fact because everything else is being driven by the inside sizing. So I'm going to use uh, 0 0.22 uh, birch plywood here, and I'm going to leave the curve at 0 0.7 because I want to glue this particular box. And I think it's ready to go, so I'm going to hit the blue button uh, to get my SVG. I have all the pieces here and we only have two inside dividers. I decided to start by gluing one of the long sides to the base. After applying the glue, I spread it with a toothpick. And once the side was on, I had a place to put my divider. Then I added some glue to all the matching faces and spread it again with a toothpick. Then I went around making sure all the joints were pressed in. I repeated the same operation on the short side and also on its opposite. At the end, I flipped around to make sure all the joints were in. You can probably tell by now that I really enjoy making things like these to stay organized. And this template just brings a lot of joy to that part of myself. I think it's great. I also think that Forrest, who designed the template, did such a good job with the 3D preview. I think it makes it more friendly and easier to decide on the final dimensions um, uh, by being able to see what the final thing is going to look like. I think that's awesome. So I hope this video and the template are useful to you. I can't wait to see what you create with them. You can help the channel by clicking like and subscribing and leaving us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching.